be back in, oh, dang, things have gotten ugly since we left. I am so sick of the Sanders campaign lying about me. I'm sick of her. I don't think you are qualified if you have voted for the disastrous war in Iraq. I think Nana and Zadie are getting a divorce. <laughs> But that is a love fest compared to how some of their supporters are behaving. This week, a Sanders fan created the Superdelegate Hit List, a website to compile the contact information of superdelegates. I'm getting calls on my personal cell phone from people all over the country. They said, um, you know, you should go to hell. How dare you vote against your own interest as an African-American woman? Hey, cool the harassment. These aren't female gamers. They're actual <laughs> people. Look. Do you even know what superdelegates are? I didn't. That's why we had to go away for two weeks. <laughs> I'll try to compress it to two minutes. First of all, political parties aren't the government. They're semi-private clubs. If they wanted, they could use a sorting hat to pick their nominees. <laughs> yeah, Slytherin! <laughs> In the 1800s, party officials would just gather in a snuff bar and nominate the guy with the best facial hair, which, admit it, Brooklyn for Bernie, you could get behind. Primaries didn't exist until the invention of the automobile, because where would you have put your bumper stickers before that? And party elites still controlled the nomination until 1968, when primary voters cast their ballots for anti-Vietnam War candidates, and the Democratic Party said, mm, thank you so much. We've decided to go in another direction. <laughs> Longtime Full Frontal viewers may remember that night. Dig it, beautiful people. I'm Sammy B, live in Chicago, where my husband's letting me report from the Democratic National Convention. <laughs> what a gas! Man, I got a heavy trip to lay on the two-thirds of Democrats who voted for anti-war candidates. The nom just went to Hubert Humphrey, the establishment cat who didn't run in a single primary and got all his delegates from party bigwigs. Far out! What did that chick say? <gasps> Humphrey's the nominee? What? Oh my god. You are oh, no, the nom! Yeah. I believe that was the summer I had a fling with that hunky musician. I wonder whatever happened to him. To avoid another riot, the Democratic Party changed their rules to give power to the people, which the people celebrated by dropping a shit ton of acid with Hunter S. Thompson and nominating George McGovern, who went on to a resounding general election victory in D.C. and Massachusetts. <laughs> Four years later, they picked saintly, ahead of his time, Jimmy Carter, who only won because his opponent, Gerald Ford, was the Harley Quinn to Nixon's Joker. <laughs> and four years after that, Ted Kennedy waged a brutal primary challenge that left Carter as weak and defenseless as a woman left to drown in an Oldsmobile. <laughs> Sorry, guys, Ted Kennedy did a bad thing. <laughs> the Democratic Party had OD'd on democracy. Oh God, even their overdoses are boring. So, in 1982, the grown-ups said, enough. From now on, Democratic governors, members of Congress, and party movers and shakers get a say in the process, and we shall call you ex-officio delegates. That way, everyone who speaks Latin will know how you got this job. Normal people will call you superdelegates and have no idea. These people are like political wizards. They have the power to support any candidate they want, like the great and powerful Oz, these superdelegates are pulling the levers of power in your political party. You do realize the whole point was that Oz wasn't powerful, right? <laughs> Oz is just a Midwestern snake oil salesman displaced to a fantasy land full of cowards, heartless people, and straw men. Sound familiar? <laughs> Superdelegates' only job is to act in the best interest of the party. That's why they have never tried to override the will of the voters. Not because they care about us, they don't, but because pissing off the voters is bad for their party, remember? <laughs> If Bernie gets more votes than Hillary, her superdelegates will drop her faster than she drops her fake southern accent the second she leaves South Carolina. <laughs> How do I know? Because they did it in 08. So if they're not going to subvert the will of the people, what's the point of superdelegates? Think of them as the driving instructor with her foot hovering over the brake. 
She'll only use her power if the party is about to do a Thelma and Louise. Like if, hypothetically, John Edwards had been in the lead when this turd dropped on the eve of the 08 convention. John Edwards admitted today that he had an extramarital affair while his wife was battling cancer. Oh, he is gross. Point is, when Democratic voters have cause to regret their choice, superdelegates can help them fix it. They aren't there to protect Democrats from someone like this. They're there to protect them from someone like this. Believe me, Republicans would give their left nut for superdelegates right now. <laughs> So Democrats, when some jackass goads you into drunk dialing a superdelegate in the middle of the night, instead of saying, hey, bitch, switch your vote, say, hey, bitch, thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back.